Hello, I'm Joel Blackford with Beth Hassett Sabbath Fellowship. Thank you for joining us. We're virtual only. We're based out of St. Paul, Minnesota. The phone number works if you'd like to contact us. We do the thought behind the thought. There are many great people, including John Haller, that do the news. I try not to do the news because you can get it through John, and he'll give you two hours, sometimes four hours a week on that. I try to do the thought behind the thought, what you need to know, the, your reality, our existence. We're working on Revelation every week. This is chapter 6, verses 12 through 17, in terms of signs and the sun and the moon and the eclipses and all the other fun stuff going on. And there's new things that you need to be aware of. So we're solving a little piece of Revelation every week. And this is interesting. Is God's judgment due soon? We have the April 8th Aviv 1, which is Nisan 1, which is the first day of the religious calendar. And uh, and so that'll be interesting. That's 2024, and I'm claiming it's worship. I'm on this show every week with Doug Hamp and Scott Harwell, uh, Thursday nights at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 7 o'clock Central. Please join us. It's a lot of fun. We do the thought behind the thought again. We're doing eclipses this week. We try to give you the Bible. We try to give you accurate prophecy and fake news. No, we give you real news. So once again, the first eclipse was 2017. Then the next one was 2024. That makes a tov over the sky. Look on the left-hand side, and you'll see the paleotov is like an X or a, a cross or something like that, kind of over. And so there it is from 2017 to 2024. Then we also add in the other eclipses of 2017, 2021, 2023, and then now coming up in April 8th of 2024, and we come up with an olive, the paleo olive, which could look like a bull, but the paleo there is that A on the side, and that's what it looks like right now. So is this a mark? Uh, it's The mark is right now that the elephants are being spooked by potential earthquakes. We've had this happen before, back in 1226 of 04, just after Christmas Day, we had the elephants get spooked over the Indian Ocean earthquake, and they started running for the hills. So this was a tsunami. So first you had the, the elephants screaming and trumpeting, if you believe that. Then they ran up towards the hills. Then the earthquake busted forth. Then the tsunami came. So they had an elephant warning before this occurred. And this is a report from History Channel from October 2nd of 2018. But the main thing is, even the Devon, Denver Post noticed, noticed this, that the elephants were tranquil and everything was fine, and then they busted loose. And so these odd shrieks, these trumpet calls, preceded the tsunami. Okay, now let's move to 2024 in Africa and say that Jennifer Africa has been around elephants for 30 to 40 years and, and she's been monitoring them. Well, every single one of them, we're told by all of their animals, are running for the hills. Now, my friend and her colleagues are warning everyone that some global, unprecedented, cataclysmic event is about to happen. The animals don't lie. The animals are running for higher ground. They believe that either a global earthquake or a tsunami is coming. They don't know when and they don't know how much time is left. So that's from March 9th. And now we are up to like March 23rd right now. So yes, around four o'clock in the morning, the elephants heard made this unusual sound and then they made the loud scream and it scared them. And then they finally broke loose. And five minutes before the tsunami hit, the, the coast, the elephants secured by chains around the front angles began screaming again, and they broke for, forth and they took off. Okay, then <laughs> the waves hit, the three waves. Amazing. So the elephants forewarned it. Now we'll move on to point number two. There's going to be a bunch of them. Stick with me. This is a big one. Okay, so in 1904, Alistair Crowley and his wife, and I'm blanking on their name right now, and I really don't care, Rose, Rose, of, of all the names. I love roses. Love to grow them. So he was the man that proposed, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. So he came up with his own Torah, so to speak. And love is the law, love under will. Well, that's the lemma. And uh, they wrote their book of the law on April 8th, 9th and 10th, in Cairo, Egypt, in the year of 1904. And the angel that came to him was uh, was Awas, Iwas, and he later identified him as his holy guardian angel, which is a demonic angel, a fallen angel. So he and his wife rose the medium, and, and he was known as the most wicked man in the world. Gary Lockman wrote a book about this, Magic, Rock and Roll, and the Wickedest Man in the World, Aleister Crowley and Rose. 
Okay, so once again, that's 120 years. Man is appointed 120 years. As I said, my spirit will not live in human beings forever. They too are flesh. Therefore, their lifespan is 120 years. Genesis 6.3. So let's look at their connection to Jimmy Page and rock and roll and the works of Aleister Crowley and, and the backstory. It's no secret that the, the Led Zeppelin loved the Lord of the Rings. They loved Mordor and Golem. And they wrote about it in their songs. Uh, they loved Tolkien. Uh, the Hermit was merely inspired by a figure from a tarot card. Page played the role of the Hermit during the fantasy sequence of Zeppelin's 1976 movie, The Song Remains the Same. Uh, Jimmy Page bought the house that belonged to Aleister Crowley. You can see it pictured right there. And, and he found it to be cursed. Okay, so the backstory is that... Uh, there's the magic book on the right-hand side. That the page had a symbol for his Zeppelin number four album, and it's Z O S O. I will not say it to you because that is the demon of the Ouija board. Okay, so the symbol was that you know in the in the Greek, I assume, because that's a Greek word. And so page insists the symbols aren't even letters, though that hasn't stopped people from referring it to the blank album. Z-O-S-O. -O. Technically, the album is untitled. Okay, so that's Zeppelin IV. So just keep that in mind. And that particular word, um, and, and so, oh, this Master Therion on the right-hand side from the book, the magic book, okay, Therion is the fourth plague of the fourth horseman. So go to Revelation 6-8 and start looking through the four plagues, and you'll see the fourth one is Therion. And so he knew, he wanted people to call him Master Therion, Master Bio-Warfare. Master Plague, Master, you know, that's that's the general thing that he was doing. So once again, Jimmy Page is linked with Aleister Crowley. Um, so here's the, once again, that Z-O-Z-O -Z -O or Z-O-S-O -O is the demon of the Ouija board. And it's well known. There have been movies about it and things like that. This poor uh, Beatles album that I used to enjoy has Crowley on the front of it. You know, he's an important player uh, with John Lennon, and John Lennon died young, too. So Page's obsession with uh, Aleister Crowley led to whispers that he and Satan were tight. Yet another rumor claimed, and this is from Rolling Stone, that the members of Led Zeppelin had made a Faustian bargain in exchange for stardom. The truth is there's no evidence that Page was a Satanist, although he believed in Crowley's philosophy of personal liberation. Okay, do what thou wilt. Yep, okay, and things like that. I don't really want to go on about my personal beliefs or my involvement in magic, he told Rolling Stone. I'm not inter interested in turning anybody on to, any, uh, to anything that I'm turned on to. So, yeah, that's his answer, which is always, how it, always vague. The church burned with the congregation in it. Okay, so Crowley bought this particular home that was uh, rather Crowley bought it after uh, three people had lived in it right on Loch Ness, Scotland. Interesting. Okay. He bought it in 1971. He claimed it was haunted. haunted. Um, uh, let's see, two or three owners before Crowley moved into it. And um, there's also a church there. And that church was burned to the ground with the congregation in it. Strange things have happened in that house that had nothing to do with Crowley. The bad vibes were already there. A man was beheaded there, and sometimes you can hear his head rolling down. There you go. Thank you, Rolling Stone, for that story. More from Rolling Stone. Televangelist Paul Crouch brought this allegation into mainstream in 1982, claiming that when you play uh, Bustle in Your Hedgerow, which is from their signature tune, which is Stairway to Heaven, here's what it says in the when you rotate it backwards. Here's to my sweet Satan, the one whose little path would make me sad, whose power is Satan. He will give those with him 666. There was a little tool shed where he made us suffer. Sad Satan. Yeah, so that's Stairway to Heaven. That's their title track. Who on earth would ever do something like this? You know, well, Paul Crouch had some friends that would check these things out. Paul was an interesting guy. I won't say much about him. Jan had the weirdest pink wigs ever, his wife. They're both deceased now. And um, I don't know. I'm not a TBN fan. I would never go on their shows. Okay, so a busy year. 2024 will be a busy year. This is from Mark Biltz at El Shaddai, and you can expect anti-Semitism, ethnic problems, the elections. It'll be political. It'll be nasty. And then you'll have Hamas involved, too. So will you see God, God's judgment? I don't know. But let's continue on. 
Once again, Mark Biltz from El Shaddai is telling us that we've had seven eclipses before. Then the eighth one was 2017. And now this is the ninth eclipse across America since our inception. They all seem to be related to wars. So Mark Biltz is prophesying wars will be coming to America soon. And because of this eclipse pattern from 2017 to 2024, the wars are coming to the world, but I can't say, I mean, maybe this is a 10 year warning that we'll have wars, um, the Gog Magog war. I think we'll have skirmishes and we'll have things like that just happened in Russia, the shooting. But I can't say that I agree uh, totally with Mark, although I love Mark dearly. I think he's a wonderful researcher and man, um, but I'm not seeing the war cycle yet. It'll come in a few years. Um, once again, in 2017, it was seven Salem's that uh, the the path crossed. This will be eight Ninevehs. Uh, they'll meet, uh, you know, the two eclipses from 2017 and 2024 in Little Egypt, which is interesting. And you can see the pattern of how the Earth and the Moon and the Sun align for certain types of eclipses, whether it's uh, an Umbra or or wherever it happens to be, you know, that, that does it. And and we'll discuss that in the next slide, which is, you know, it's four. The Sun is 400 times larger than the Moon, but it's also about 400 times further from the Earth. So that's what gives us the ability to have this. And I'm not a flat earther, just so you're aware. So the interesting thing is this Tav, the sign. There's the Aleph and the Tav, the Tav, the cross. Uh, and, and so it means mark, truth, sign, life, death, sign, uh, ownership, seal, covenant, last, joining together, things like that. It means the Tav, you know, in, in the Gematria is 400. So very interesting. And we've got the 400 on the left-hand side, the 400, you know, times larger and 400 times further. And then this is from Ezekiel 9.4, where the word Tav is in the text. Adonai said to him, go throughout the city, throughout all Jerusalem, and put a mark, that's Tav, on their foreheads of the men who are sighing and crying over the disgusting practices that are being committed in it. And the people without the mark were killed. So keep in mind, there's the mark of God, which is the Tav, potentially. And then there's the mark of Satan, which is 666. Just interesting how you can see that Led Zeppelin believed in their 666. Okay, continuing on. Um, we have the eclipse coming up. And intriguingly enough, um, <laughs> look at the congressional roll call on the left-hand side, and you'll see <laughs> they took a bad vote just uh, in, in, in March. And, and pass this bill for spending, which is ridiculous, and for crazy spending on crazy projects. And then they took a vacation, and they won't come back until the 9th of April after the eclipse. And it's just interesting. One more. Many, many interesting points. So Rachel Baxter is saying, judgment that is ahead with war, economic woes, and famine, and things like that. And then Congress adjourned after that unpopular spending bill. So they ran out just like the wimps that they are. Okay, once again, this will be celebrating Aviv 1, Nissan 1 coming up here on April 8th, and that's in two weeks now. It'll be very interesting to see what occurs. That's an important month in the biblical calendar, and so that's April 8th. And so I think it's God's way of saying, start celebrating his festivals. They're not Jewish, they're God's festival. And, and the phrase from Daniel 12 and Revelation 12 is La Moed, Moedim, Vachetzi. And so basically that's saying that you will be noticing these appointed festivals as we go into the Great Tribulation via what Daniel is telling us and John in Revelation is telling us. So just be aware that the signs are for, let them be for signs and for Moedim and for days and for Shani years. So uh, just be aware, God is going to be centering things on his festivals as we move forward. And as I mentioned before, that Aviv one, that Nisan one day, is when Moses set up the tabernacle. So that's Exodus 40. And that's the Midbar, which is the wilderness, Mishkan, which is, you know, that, that tabernacle. So it's all very interesting. It's a lot of circumstance, but or circumstantial information, but it's really interesting, okay? Um, we're going to have what appears to be a reddish moon on the full moon coming up on March 24th of 25, which is tonight. And, and I won't be able to see anything. It's snowing in Minnesota right now. Then we will have an eclipse on 314 of uh, 25. 
and then uh, an eclipse again, a blood moon eclipse on 3, 2, and 3 of 2026. So that sounds like Purim. That sounds like what uh, Amir, well, not Amir, Rabbi Kurt Schneider is saying, which is there should be a Purim event coming up where Israel will beat back their enemies. This, these Haman-like people, these Agagites, these, uh, um, oh, why am I blanking on, the Amalekites. And, and this should be occurring based on what we're seeing in the signs of the sky. So it's just interesting. That's the Purim theme for Israel, and let's hope there's a victory coming. So other things are going on. You know, you're, once again, I wanted to cite some of these older eclipse patterns, and this is uh, from a friend, uh, I'm Jared, and he is supernatural by design, and he does set a lot of dates. And that's too bad. Oh, man, does he set updates. But he is a good researcher, so I have to pat him on the back for that. So he's basically saying marked regathering of Israel from 48 and 49, and you see this pattern of eclipses. You know, So you're going to have um, the extra Passover, uh, e not eclipse so much in, in this pattern of four, but you'll have the big four in 49 and 50 during the time that Netanyahu was born. But then there were signs in 48 also. And then in 1967 through 1969, you had the same pattern setting up. And that's when the recapture of Jerusalem occurred. So it's very interesting. And, and so it's good research by him. Keep in mind that Moscow was attacked, and so he's predicting that, uh, that there would be an attack occurring. I didn't know that. Um, and, and then um, you also have the cancer scares uh, from Princess Catherine and King Charles. And I know a guy that thinks King Charles III is going to be the Antichrist. Well, he'll probably be dead in six months because he has um, pancreatic cancer, uh, according to a few reputable sources. He has pancreatic cancer. That's about a six-month notice. Uh, he might get a year, but so that means William will be the king soon. And um, so just keep in mind, th these are odd little signs. Uh, New Madrid uh, earthquakes could occur as a result of this. So a lot of people are predicting that. And then once again, the Esther connection, where you have this solar eclipse of 2024 on April 8th, but you also had a solar eclipse of April 9th of 480 BC. And so <laughs> it's just very similar uh, with the Esther story. So we're seeing the Esther connection. This is once again, Jared from Supernatural by Design. He sets a lot of dates, but I like his research. This is Jared again, Supernatural by Design, saying that you had an annular solar eclipse when Ali ha Haman Khamenei, Khamenei, was born, okay, in Pisces, and then with Netanyahu, during that eclipse, Tetrad of 49 and 50, we had a partial solar eclipse, and Bibi was born during that time frame, and so he matches up with this time frame going forward of what a generation is. Very good find. I mean, uh, obviously, he's finding the interesting things. So there's, once again, a perm connection between Haman and uh, Bibi, which would be Mordecai the Benjamite. So very interesting. Continuing on, the cicadas, noisy little bugs in 2024. They're going to, two different broods are going to pop up, and they're going to be noisy and stinky, and they're going to pop over, over little Egypt, and it'll be... <laughs> It'll be just another sign, more signs. So two broods of cicadas, trillions of noisy, stinky bugs. And and that's an earthquake zone, which is the New Madrid fault line area. And it, it burst forth in 1811, 1812. You heard it sound off in Boston, as far away as Boston. It was the greatest earthquake in America to this day. And this eclipse pattern is setting up to to meet over Little Egypt, which is the New Madrid area. Very interesting, okay? And then we also have another sign, which is we have a 1,700-mile crack across America it was discovered by modern-day gravity map mapping with satellite data and referred to uh, as the Montana to Florida alignment and uh, Missouri gravity low. This crack, seen in blue, intersects the New Madrid fault line, which is represented in the black. What's interesting is that the fault lines in the path of the Great American Eclipse that takes place on August 7, or 21 of 2017 and again on April 8th, 2024, are identical with it. Do you see another interesting connection, the earthquake connections? This is a John Moore flood map on the right-hand side and how we've always wondered if there was going to be another New Madrid 
uh, uh, earthquake that would be causing op an opening from Lake Superior, basically, all the way down to New Orleans. And so <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. It, it is interesting. One more interesting sign. Once again, these are the eclipses coming up, whether partial or full, and how they line up with the tribes. And, you know, uh, it's just going to be an interesting time frame. The main point is that if you read Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 through 17, you'll see that the sun and the signs and the moon, those two sets of signs, match up for the sixth seal. Am I predicting anything? No, I'm just saying be aware. Be, be noticing, be a witness. That's what you're supposed to do. But these, these signs match up with chapter 6, 12 through 17. Just read it for yourself and uh, refer to some of my videos because I, I give you the Greek very well. So anyway, the main thing is... Another sign is the six months, or six years, six months, six weeks, and six days between the two eclipses. Six, 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 six. Very interesting. And then they meet over Little Egypt, that part of southern Illinois. Very interesting. How does that happen? Then continuing on, the planets will start to align as of uh, April 4th, 2024. Venus, Neptune, Saturn, and Mars. Then you'll have some more alignments coming along through late June. And, and you have this weird situation with the dawning of the age of Aquarius. You know, when the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter aligns with Mars, then peace will guide the planets and love will steer the stars, the dawning of the age of Aquarius. So you know the Crowley types are excited about the planetary alignment and the other things that are happening because their time is short. Satan's time is short and the Crowleyites time is short, the Thelemus and, and uh, the uh, Great Therion and things like that. Very weird stuff. Once again, the planets align. Then we have Pons Brook coming through too. And that aligns with 1812, which is part of the earthquake time frame for the New Madrid fault line. Very interesting again. And there's Pons Brooks, 12P Pons Brooks, that's going to possibly uh, appear and shine as the eclipse is occurring. Very interesting. Okay. This is Michael Snyder, Substack. Michael's a friend of mine, and he he does a lot of what I do. Um, but this is great research. So he's saying the great American eclipse reminds him, uh, so the, the 2017 to 2024, the seven-year time frame, reminds him of the two eclipses that happened seven years apart when Babylon fell too. So we have these ancient cuneiform tablets that say that there was a seven-year time span when the original Babylon Empire fell. Then seven years before King Cyrus conquered Neo-Babylon, uh, uh, October 23rd of 546, there was a partial solar eclipse over the city of Babylon. Seven years later, 539 B.C., there was a partial solar eclipse over the city of Babylon. So they, they had it intersecting over them, and and so uh, they were being judged, and they were being judged. And and it's just interesting that Cyrus received a dream and walked in, and in about an hour they fell. There was really no fighting. Uh, very interesting. So this is Michael Snyder again. Very good report. Very well done. And then the worship aspect. I want you to keep this in mind. There's the Babylon worship. Then there's also the American worship and Asia Minor with the altar of Zeus, the throne of Satan, which then moved from Babylon to Asia Minor and up to Germany. And it's been there for two world wars and it will be there for the third world war. And the person that honors it the most is Obama from Denver in 2008. And it was worship people. It was, it was, you know, Antipas was killed basically inside a burning bull. And, and that's Revelation 2.13. And Obama signified it. He, he honored it in his presentation in 2008 because he hates God and he hates Jews and he hates a lot of people. And, and he, he did go to 10 Downing Street just the other day here. So watch him for worship as we move forward. Keep in mind, the throne of Satan is on Museum Island. And Obama gave a speech there in 2019. And, and that was worship. Okay, it was. And, and so he, watch Obama. Watch his wife. Watch, you know, on Aviv of, of 10 of 2019. She was there to watch 
uh, I'm blanking on the name of uh, Notre Dame, Bern. And, and so they're in this together. The elites are preparing to worship Satan, possibly Berlin, because that is where the seat of Satan is. But things are going to happen. So once again, the eclipse occurs on April 8th. The planets are going to align April 4 through 24. Best sightings will be through late June of 2024. Pons Brooks should be interesting to see. The sun's pole shift will occur. Uh, so they'll we'll have solar mag uh, maximum coming up in 24 and 25. Great this tonight, if I could see the sun, I mean that's the sun, the stars tonight. I could see the aurora tonight. It's going to be amazing on Sunday night. So. We should have electrical storms as a result of that, heat waves and things like that. It'll get very weird going forward, people. You'll see more sunburns and cancers. Well, you're already seeing the cancers. I reported on two of them, King Charles and uh, Princess Kate. And and people are going to go nuts, too, so be aware of that. Those are sixth seal signs. And so the most important thing is on the left-hand side, Israel is alone. This is The Economist magazine. This is freshly out in March of 2024. Israel is all alone. That's how God wants it. Okay, He wants everybody to pull away from Israel, and he wants to be the king. He wants to be the one that Israel turns to and repents. So prophecy's working out, people. Okay, So just keep that in mind. That's how it works out. We're in the birth pangs. We're moving along. We are not in the tribulation. We are not in the great tribulation. What does it all mean? Just monitor what's going on. Be aware. I think you should be fasting on April 8th. I really believe you should be because the, the sex magic people will be fasting and, well, they'll be partying. They'll be eating. So you fast, you pray because you need to work on you. Yeshua is returning on Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur or Sukkot or some future year. You need clean garments. You can't be naked. You have to work on it because it's a wedding and you don't want to be thrown out of the wedding for being naked, which would be stupid. But dirty garments are stupid too. Work on it, people. Get it done. Be blessed. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for sharing with me and we'll see you hopefully in a week.